the program. We have a situation. Born showed up on our surveillance in Southern Europe. Tour in Italy. London. Tangier. What's he after? He's retracing his steps, looking for something. We need to know what it is. Someone made me what I am. And I'm going to find him. Who's Vosin? He trained you. He was with you from the beginning. He knows who you are. They're not going to let you go. They need to bring you home in a body bag. They can't stop me. Pamela Landy. I hear you're still looking for me. Tracing this. Coming online. The place is confirmed and valid. The street. Jason Bourne is within 1,000 yards of this building. He's communicating. Then we should communicate back. I'm going out there. Get the vehicles. We're going mobile. Follow Landy. She leads us to Jason Bourne. We need to find him and we need to take him out. Street teams, Alpha, Bravo. Let's look sharp. Where is he, people? Noah Wilson. This is Jason Bourne. I was wondering when you were going to make this call. Perhaps we could arrange a meet. Where are you now? I'm sitting in my office. I doubt that. Why would you doubt that? If you were in your office right now, we'd be having this conversation face to face. A code 10 aboard. Code 10 aboard. Everyone back to the building. Don't tell me he's gone. He has our entire playbook. Names, dates, ghost sites. Every dirty little secret we have. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I remember. I remember everything. Born Identity, and oh, it's, I was just watching it with you. Wasn't that exciting? Can you handle an hour and a half of that level of activity and energy? I almost couldn't. <laughs> but, you know, everybody's going to see it because you just have to be able to slow down again for other movies when they come. All right, so you got your high-paced ones, but you're still available for the other ones that may have something to say. Welcome to Movie Close-Up. I'm Bonnie Steiger. We have a guest. You don't see him yet because I have a couple of things to say because San Francisco, gee, if only there were money here for movies, this would really be a mecca because it's buzzing with activity. Do you know, do you know that the Castro Theater is now 85 years old and they're celebrating so they have this weekend coming up they have all kinds of uh, a woman who's singing another woman who's opening for her who's singing um and i don't know what that's about but then that's august 10th 11th and 12th saturday august 11th for the matinee where they have the wonderful laurel and hardy way out west accompanied by some classic cartoons 25 cents to get in because that's what it used to cost. So for that day, for that matinee, 25 cents to get into the palatial Castro Theater and watch Laurel and Hardy and some classic cartoons. Later on, they're going to be have a sing-along Wizard of Oz. Extra added, oh my God, the print is so little treat. Uh, Monique Argent is going to be there. Then San Francisco, the movie. Can you imagine San Francisco playing at the Castro? Have you been in the Castro? I have. It's been a while. All, all right. So you know there's someone else here with me. But uh, 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 And they have little things like um, Gone with the Wind, a little thing like Gone with the Wind oh. on, on Sunday. And they have Phantom of the Opera. The Which one? Castro Theater, Warren Lupish, whatever. Anyway, you can see on the bottom of the screen the contact information, um, www.thecastrotheatre.com. What else, you may ask? Well, so many of my guests love doing shorts, particularly my guest tonight loves doing shorts. There is yet another San Francisco Shorts Festival coming up. And uh, they have many programs. And this is going to be playing at the Red Vic. So comfortable. 
such good coffee, such good popcorn, and the Victoria. Go around the corner, get a burrito at La Cumbre, and you can see the information down in the bottom of the screen there for the information for the Shorts Film Festival. And we move on to my guest, another Jason, because this is, this is the time of Jason's here. I should really put on my glasses. Jason Denzel. Denzel. But Denzel Washington says Denzel. He does. That's his first name. Mine's a last name, so we do it a little bit differently. There's no relation. You know, and there's no sense to it. And, you know, you could spell it P-H-O-E-B-E, -E, and it'll still pronounce it Denzel or Denzel. It might be a stretch, but... <laughs> Some people do that. So, Jason is a shorts filmmaker. And this is a... a is this a, a, a decision based on your artistic preference or uh, monetary considerations or convenience of shooting or what? Certainly a little bit of both. It's definitely a monetary thing. I mean, I don't think that uh, it's feasible when you've got a family and everyday life and a regular job to go out and just, hey, let's shoot a feature. But um, I've found that over time after I've made several shorts that I've come to love it and I really like the short format and I see it as a unique challenge to try to tell a compelling story in a shorter time frame than if I had two hours. Some people find restrictions um, inspiring. I definitely agree with that. It's yeah. uh, one of the, um, exactly like what you can find is that when you need to find a, a character arc and you've only got two minutes to do it in, um, sometimes you know it's not worth going down there, but I think the kind of stories that um, I've enjoyed telling have, are the kinds that would benefit from having subtle character arcs, or at least moments that where the characters change and you need a little bit of time to do that right. and so finding a way to do that in a short format has been a challenge and a lot of fun it's one of the reasons i probably come back and do it again and again would you prefer doing shorts to features i mean if you could have your druthers do you dream of doing the absolutely perfect short or eventually making the feature that is the great American feature. I would love to have an opportunity to one day work on a feature, and mm -hmm. you know, I'll probably eventually get there if there's, um, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. Right. At the same time, though, I don't think that I would ever stop doing short films. You know, there's, there's so much fun, and they probably don't take as much effort as a feature does. Well, if it's a ten-minute short to a hundred-minute feature, I would think it's one tenth the effort. Um, I don't know. I'll let you know after okay. I make a feature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody should know this is a live call-in show. At least you forget. The number here is 6214472. What was that? 6214472. He's listening. Are you listening? So, you know, this is a very interesting topic, topic deciding that you're going to hold a pattern of creating within the small format genre. And you made a company called Argonaut Entertainment. Website, argonaut-ent.com. Mm -hmm. And you say a few very interesting things on that website. Did you know that? What? Well, well, I'm, well sure I'm glad you find them interesting. <laughs> well, besides going through all the different films you've made, Mm -hmm. And the awards you've won, yes. Um, you say you're, anybody who's interested in participating can contact you and... Certainly. Uh, if, um, you know, we're, when you say we started a company, it's not really a company that's out to, you know, have board of investors and, uh, you know, make a huge profit. It's, you know, a gathering of like-minded individuals who want to mm -hmm. make great movies. And... Um, uh, of course, you know, if you somehow stumble by our website and are interested in making a movie and we're making a movie, then yeah, anyone's welcome, of course, to come by. To also contribute directing or writing skills as well? Absolutely. So you're not saying this is my company, my movies, and you can help me make my movies necessarily? Well, I mean, it's um, if, if someone, w for whatever reason, were to show up and knock on my door and say, hey, I've got a great movie that, um, you know, that I want to direct and um, you want to help me out with it. If it's something that 
you know, myself and whoever else is involved in our little projects we're interested in, then yeah, it's a lot of fun. Now here's the hook. You're in Sacramento. And <laughs> and actually, I you know, initially I, I, um, I, I used to be down here in the Bay Area and we lived in the peninsula and uh, my family and I, and then we moved up to Sacramento because you can, you know, there's some great houses up there and it's more affordable to, to get into a home and we wanted to start a family at the time. So that was the reason for going up there. But the neat thing about Sacramento is that there's lots of people doing that. And so there is a small but growing uh, community of filmmakers up there that, you know, I've just a little bit tapped into. And uh, um, the other benefit is that um, it's still close enough here where, um, you know, all the contacts and people that I had worked with from the Bay Area mm -hmm. are still an hour away. I'm able to come down for live shows like this, you know, and well, not mine is deal. special though. Of and course, I would have <laughs> if I lived in New York or Florida, I would have come. I don't do per diems though. No, I don't cover expenses. No, oh, okay. But I really appreciate. Uh, you know, it's really close to two hours to get here from Sacramento, and I. I appreciate the effort. Thank you very Not much. Not a problem. Another thing, yeah. what was the other thing you said on your website? Ah, you don't try to please audiences. I just want to say very shortly we'll be showing a clip from one of your works so people know what you're talking about. But you try to please individuals. That, that has got to be one of the, the core missions behind any project that I set out to do. I absolutely believe that um, movies, successful movies, talk to a person one-to-one. -one. You know, when you're okay. watching it and, you know, sometimes you watch a movie and you think like, wow, this is just, this is my movie or, uh, you know, like, I, this is just mine. It doesn't belong to anyone else. And you have that special connection to it and you really get lost in the movie. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what it's all about. And, um, you know, I'm, like I said, well, I'm not here to make any money or tons of money or whatever, and so um, I'm not looking to make any pro movies that appeal to, um, you know, demographics or large, uh, you know, specific audiences of a certain age group or whatever. I'm here to make good movies that an individual, that individuals will enjoy, and I hope that's what we're doing. Poetically speaking, could you say you're talking with an intimate voice rather than a general voice? You're not shouting to the crowd. You're you're trying to form a kind of intimacy with the people who watch your film. I definitely I can see that. That's a good way to put it. Because I was trying to figure out what what did he really mean by that? It's time we saw a piece of your work. Do you want to tell us what Milestones is about before we go to it? Well, Milestones the um, uh, the initial challenge there was that um, we wanted to make a holiday film. And so instead of making something that was about a family or uh, whoever at Christmas time or something else that we've seen lots and lots of times, um, the, you know, myself and a uh, you know, group of individuals who were working on our team, we kind of brainstormed some ideas and uh, somehow we settled on the idea of telling the life, almost the life story of a couple over time um, and tell and showing little vignettes of their life on certain holidays, and um, and it can, their their life and the year kind of progress in parallel. So well, it, actually, it's over many many years. It, it is. It's right. ab, it's over many many years. But we see, you know, the, initially we see them at New Year's when they get together, and then we see them, you know, at a, there's you know, a Mother's there's day. a Mother's Day where they have the baby, and there's then, a Thanksgiving, and it's. Yes, yeah, it's the at different part. phases of their whole relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go take a look at Milestones by Jason Denzel? How am I doing? Yep, perfect. Okay, we'll be right back. But you'll stay. <sighs> He's so beautiful. His chin quivers like yours when he's asleep. Mm. Mm. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Mm. 
It's his favorite toy. It's taken longer than I thought, but I, I haven't forgotten. It's okay. Happy Father's Day. to go, son. Well, that's a heartbreaker, isn't it? Well. Well. I know, and uh, um, those, the actors gave a, a great performance there, and, uh, and it was a little... Uh, but that's what life is. Yeah, you know, and when you're in a compressed short format, you got to, you know, if you want to get an emotional reaction from your audience members, or if you want to get them to an emotional state, you some, and you don't have a lot of time to build up, sometimes you just got to low blow and you know tilt press, the off. <laughs> press the button press the button yeah yeah exactly. right it's, i know what you're saying but i've noticed for many of your films that are listed and described on your website it seems like you you're fascinated by relationships relationships over time like this one um the human condition is that where you're going is yeah uh, definitely i am um, uh, that's not to say that I don't enjoy comedy or any of those other, you know, uh, fun things and action. But def um, I think that telling s stories about people who are flawed and telling stories about people who struggle and um, you know have to overcome their situation and rise to a higher level mm -hmm. within themselves that that's important. And finding stories about people that uh, make sacrifices in order for, you know, that maybe, you know, sacrifices not necessarily for the greater good or for other people. And uh, that's, you know. For love? For love, absolutely. For you love. Know? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I do do comedies, too. <laughs> well, we will be seeing a, a, a funny little sci-fi comedy in a moment. But before we even go there, you're making shorts. Do you have no intention of... Um, ever making money from them? Like the short film festival we referred to before, they had cash prizes. Do you see distribution? Do you see a market? And think of the competition like Born Identity and Supremacy and Ultimatum and Stardust with sci-fi and special effects. Do you see a niche, a niche for yourself? I definitely see well first of all the, the the born identity and all those you know those are big budget features right. that you know uh, I don't think um, not uh, that you're competing but are there people besides the born the born people out there who want to see these films and get this some is money for it yeah I think so I think that this is probably the best time ever really to be a short film uh, short film filmmaker and the reason for that is because um, the internet really because everyone or a lot of people watch short films online we have YouTube we've got all these other sites are creeping up and you know MySpace there's video all over the internet these days mm -hmm. and um, the attention spans and bandwidth and everything else I mean it's real easy to watch a short film online right. and in terms of making money from that I mean I would do it if I wasn't making any money um, but given the opportunity, and there are opportunities now where you can put movies online and get a little bit of a return for it. You know, and the way you do that is not necessarily that someone is going to, like, I don't think 
a lot of people would sit down and uh, pay a couple dollars to watch that Milestones movie, um, n not even if it was twice as good or whatever. It's just, you know, it's not something that people are willing to do. But there's advertisers out there who know that, that you are going to be watching that movie or other movies or whatever. And so they put ads in before and after, and there's some, web, some great websites out there that do that. And so people might be willing to spend 15 cents, 25 cents, but maybe thousands of them are, and when they click on your movie, the advertiser keeps sure. track of those. Yeah, those put things. an ad before and after, or just after or just before, and uh, right. um, that way, you know, the end user isn't paying any money. But the um, oh, uh, so the advertiser, the advertiser pays for the yeah, click. Yeah, the advertiser. But there pays. are some websites where you do pay a fee and you click on the movie and watch it. Mm -hmm. You so, know, so there, there are, are several ways to do it on the internet. There's several ways to do it on the internet, and um, there's only going to get more, um, more beneficial to the filmmaker, and there's mm -hmm. going to be more of them. But I think this is a great time to do all so that. So you don't have to move on to features if if it's if it doesn't feel comfortable for you. No, but at the same time, as I said earlier, I would love to someday do a feature, and maybe if I have enough people watch uh, these little short films, you know, those nickels and dimes add up. Right. Who knows? You know. You're. You've already written a script, a feature script. I have written. Um, I uh, happen to know. Yeah, <laughs> you've been reading the website. Every word. I have written, um, uh, you know, a feature, but you know, they're not, they're more about there is more about the exercise of going through and completing ninety to one hundred and twenty pages and telling a a full story and um, with the arc with this act yeah. one two three mm -hmm. so it's more of an exercise at this point exactly but you got another specter specter is a project that i am um, trying to get off the ground right now right now um it's something that it, it's a it's a short live action sci-fi fantasy piece and uh um, i'm really excited about this in the sense because it really goes it's been one of these stories that's been kicking around in my head since I was a kid, since I was a teenager. And I Let me cut you off now because we are so quickly running out of time. I want to be able to get your pod commuter on before we have to go. Okay. So let us that's watch pod one. commuter come by, talk a little bit, and then move on. So here is one of your earliest films in 2002, Pod Commuter. Are we back? Are we 
we back? We are back. All right, I really got to wear my glasses. We're back. That was that was an early work when you were still influenced by your advanced training in computer graphics and design in Chico State. That's right. I um, I. This was about five years ago I made the movie, and uh, this was a movie that I had um, I entered into at the time. It was the first year that they did the Star Wars Film Festival, and uh, um, you know, I, I've, all, I've had a huge love of the series for a long time, and uh, like so many other people, and uh, I was a couple years out of college, and I was stuck in traffic, and just needed to, I wished I, it was right when the new movies were coming out, and, and the pods and all, and the racing was, was popular, and so um, I just, was daydreaming about how to get to work on time and drive one of those. So that's kind of what evolved in the movie. And, and you know that Lucas sat and watched it. Yeah, it, the movie was selected as a finalist in the competition. And so um, I, they said that George Lucas sat down and watched all the finals, and he picked his winner. And this one didn't win anything, but it's still kind of neat to know that he uh, that watched it. Okay, so now everybody's really excited about seeing your films. Great. <laughs> The website. Yeah, you can find uh, those two movies that you saw and um, and the other ones that I've worked on at my argonaut-entweb.com website. Right. And uh, you know, either we'll link you over to YouTube wherever they're showing, and uh, but that's a good place to to start to see the stuff and figure out what we're doing next. You're gonna let me know when you do more movies. Absolutely. And oh, we gotta go now. You know what we're gonna close with? This is a tough movie. This is called This Is England. And it sounds like it's Lord Horatio Hornblower or Queen Elizabeth. It's not. It's 1980s England, and it's when skinheads are inducting young boys and the allure of becoming part of the skinhead scene and all that's wonderful and warm and sweet and charming about it. Talk <sighs> about a good character arc, though. Probably some good stuff in there. Oh, it's really powerful. So, um, And it'll be opening soon at the Clay Theater. We love the Clay Theater. It's a, it's a landmark. It's a landmark theater. So off you go and watch some This Is England, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much, Jason. You're welcome. Jason. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Did you Honestly, mate, it's, it's sterling. Oh, Get rid of off. Really smart. Isn't he? Isn't he yeah. smart, eh? does look good. Tell you what, mate, I'm well impressed. There we go, mate. Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah. Push him down, he looks like a yeti. Oh, hey, oh mate, oh, that's so good, smart. That. Uh, honestly, mate, you look sterling. So am I in the gang now? Well, not yet. Get your shirt on. Let's see your Ben Sherman, then. I ain't, I ain't got a Ben Sherman. You tell me you've not got a shirt? No, you just told me to get the jeans and the boots. Are you having a laugh? You can't go out all nipply, can you? You're going to have to come back next week. Sit down. I'll see you, mate. Honestly, I've really got to go. Yeah, really, really. Really. Go on, mate, you're going to have to get off. Shut the door behind you. There's a good lad. Oh, hang on. Before you go, I forgot about something. Oh, fucking lying!